One of the best things Mike Kafka did last year was tinkering and toying with different personnel groupings, right? And we've been talking about this a lot with the 13 personnel package that consists of Bellinger, Waller, and Lawrence Cager and how they can really use that to their advantage to get the defense into mismatches. I think they're going to do the same with Paris Campbell, only use him in a, in a way that's like 21 personnel. Because we saw the Giants experiment with that pony package last year with Matt Breida, and they had a lot of success in big situations in the playoffs down the stretch of the year can do the same, roll out an 11 personnel package and have Paris Campbell operate in the role that we all thought Wondell Robinson would thrive in if he were to be healthy. And that's kind of operating out of the backfield and the slot, really aligning wherever the hell you need him to be. He can play running back for you in a 21 pony type of package, but he can also be your slot receiver. And to Bobby's point, he can play outside. So I think Paris Campbell, his diversified skill set and his versatility is going to allow Mike Kafka and Brian Dable to really just do a lot of creative things that we might not have seen yet. What do you guys think yeah. happens with Jalen Hyatt as a rookie? Because it's like yeah. we just talk about all receivers and name and bring yeah. him up. We didn't even bring him up. It's hard to say right now because we don't know how far along he is. We're just kind of speculating on, on uh, how good he's going to be as a route runner. I think he's just going to be slowly ingratiated into the into the lineup unless he's ready to go because the Giants have options if they all stay healthy, knocking on wood. If they stay healthy, you don't have to rely on Jalen Hyatt. But if the Giants are forced to play him, then he might just get thrown to the fire. I do think we might see, yeah, that if they're forced, like the injuries happened like they did last year, like, and obviously they've done their best right now to provide insurance policies for what happened last year. Like, yeah. remember all those injuries that went happened, like they were, like Bobby said, they were, I mean, they maybe could have played Slayton, but, and should have, but <laughs> we had David Sills running routes out there. You can't have that at the NFL level and Marcus Johnson. But what's interesting to me is like, I look, think back at some of the takeaways I had from the film. And one of them that always stood out to me was when I watched the giants at the line of scrimmage on all 22, there was literally, even when they went to 11 personnel, there was only one player on the entire roster last year where corners would play 10 yards off the ball against. And it was Darius Slayton. Every single other player, these corners are were matched up above the uh, right on these receivers. And it's like, maybe there are packages early on where they can just get Slayton and Hyatt on the field at the exact same time, just so they can open things up a little bit more because it's corners are going to have to play off high unless it's a situation where it's like, we didn't really know. And they could just press jam him at the line of scrimmage and he's got no option against that. That's not good. But if that's not the case, or if they do a lot of what they did last year toward the end, which is like those stacked uh, stack formations with easy free releases for these receivers, kind of like what Tennessee did with Hyatt, then getting those two on the field is going to add a different element of speed and force defenses to play them differently. So I, I wonder if there is an opportunity to get them on the field early, at least or when, when Slayton's on the field. We can put out 11 personnel of Waller, Campbell, Hyatt, and Slayton. And it's like, yep. Besides, besides, besides Waller, yeah, are these the best water seasons in the world? No, but you got to respect speed on both sides where last year you didn't. And I, the part that excites me more than just maybe creating explosives in the passing game is like, all right, put someone down in the box. No, right. you won't. And then we're getting, you know, hand the ball off and, and create some maybe more, some more explosive runs, which despite all Saquon's success last year, wasn't creating the same explosive runs that we saw earlier in his career. And that's something you've talked about in the past, Bobby, that I completely agree with. Either you or Justin has talked about this a bunch. And I know, Nick, we have as well. Um, and I'll let you get I know you want to say something. Nick, I just want to get, get to this. We both agree and feel pretty confident that the Giants run game could get more explosives, like you just mentioned, with lighter boxes. We don't need to have 12 personnel to get these runs like you can do them in many different ways. One of the ways you just talked about getting speed on the field could actually help the Giants in that regard. Let's not forget last year, Marcus Johnson ran the fourth most routes of all the wide receivers. And I get that there was a lot of injuries, but do you remember Marcus Johnson making one impactful catch? Green Bay. And then it was like, oh, look, Marcus Johnson. And then never and then again. Nothing. And then nothing. He had like 10 catches on the season. That Last just goes. Ball, I might feel like was that Jacksonville game when he had that drop in the red zone. When he had the drop and Daniel Jones yelled at him. And the... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But my point is a lot of the plays when Marcus Johnson was out there were these play action passes out of like 12 personnel with Marcus Johnson. Right. Darius Free. That's going to be Jalen Hyatt's role if he's up for it. Like Jalen Hyatt could start at that. That's the bar. Right. That's the floor for Jalen Hyatt. And then we can see what else he can add. And maybe there can be a threat to pull the trigger. It, and you, Nick, man, every time, and this is crazy, like when you cover a team, it's like, man, we kind of know more than uh, the team than the DCs that are covering. Because like every time Marcus Johnson was on the field at the end of the season, it was 12 personnel. It's like, all right, here yeah. comes Yankee. Here comes Yankee. Marcus <laughs> Johnson on the deep post. Slate in a, and it happened in the Vikings game. And I, we were live streaming. So I was just like, you always feel good when you call play. I was like, Yankee, Johnson, deep post, Slate and cross or bam, 60 yards, Slate and cross, uh, yeah. pass. And it was just like every time he was on the field at the end of the year, once they got Hodgins, that was what they were running. 
And why didn't Ed Donatel like see that in film study? That's the oh, that's the weird part <laughs> to me when that type of stuff. It is. It's like, how does he not see that? It was all there for him, and he has a week to prepare for this playoff game. It just, yeah, I agree with you. Sometimes it is odd when those types of things happen. And they were like, they love. We had Sean Syed on our podcast, and he was talking about the cover four match principle defense that they run you need to be cohesive and you need your communication to be on par anytime slayton ran a, a deep over in that game they never passed him off it was like what the f are you doing guys like you're not passing the guy off darius slayton had what like two huge catches i think he had more explosive plays than the rest of the giants wide receivers in the first half of that minnesota vikings game yeah the vikings defense and vikings even on offense oh. i remember because we had sean side on uh, too, and I and I think I remember talking to one of you guys about this, and one maybe when when you guys came on the pod, is like, hey, why don't the Vikings run like one gap and run down. versus the Giants? <laughs> like they just like the Giants can stop zone run, they cannot stop any gap run, and you guys Damn. like pull Ed Inger one time. He's athletic. You know what Sean said just to us? Did not do it. He said to us that they he didn't they didn't even practice it like he didn't see one he just, I think he said he saw less than a handful of reps of it all season going into that game so maybe it's just like that's the issue there but it's like the Giants are allocating every resource possible on defense to take away Justin Jefferson and yet two games for Dalvin Cook he really doesn't make much of an impact and that goes to show like that you run a little power gap there to pull someone like you said pull that Ingram one play who knows what could have happened in that game all right let's wrap up here Bobby with one more and then we'll get you out of here because this one went a little bit long but I wanted to get your final thought on the position battle and training camp you're looking forward to most so I think inside linebacker two is like the most open but it's the one I'm looking forward to the least out of Michael McFadden versus Darren Beavers one I'm looking for so we actually just went through this um so you got left guard, RB2 with Gray and Brita. You got linebacker, edge, safety. Safety outside of McKinney. I think there's five guys who can win that job. Um, you know, Pinnock, who's probably the most athletic of the group and play for them. Belton, who they drafted in the fourth round and, and like, and we found out a month ago that he was dealing with an injury, and that's why he wasn't right. getting the playing time. And I remember you liked him a lot, Dan. You talked about it on the pod. Bobby McCain, who's got a lot of coverage experience. Um, and – I came away from the draft saying I really like day three. And I know that's something that fans say after every freaking draft, <laughs> but I truly meant it. And Javarius Owens, despite being a seventh round pick, I think can play a little ball. Uh, and, I, and I'm excited. Like he's one of the players I'm most excited to see in camp. And then you got Nick McLeod, who was like, they might, they've kind of moved over to safety. So I think there's five guys who can be like by the end of the year might win them, uh, have the most reps out of, out of that group. I think Belton's probably the favorite for it. Uh, but safeties, I think, is going to be the most interest, uh, the the most intriguing one to see. That's interesting because I don't think Belton is necessarily the favorite for it. If I had to put odds on it, I would say either uh, Nick McLeod or McCain. But I think Belton's in the conversation. I think all of them are going to be used. I think you're going to see some big dime packages where Okereke, it's not going to be quarter. Okereke will still be out there. I think there might be some plays where he's not, but Okereke is athletic enough to, to yeah. live in those in those smaller personnel packages while still adding some physicality if they do decide to run the football, which the Giants were coming out like first and 10 against Green Bay being like, hey, we have seven defensive backs out here. Yeah. What do you do? But right now, you have Bobby McCain, you have Dane, but like Trey Hawkins, if he can really step in, there's a lot of players who are defensive backs who are going to operate in that in that smaller personnel package. And I'm excited to see it, specifically for McCain and Belton, because both those guys are really deceptive in the short underneath zones in terms of playing one route and then going to the subsequent route and manipulating the quarterback and causing either PBUs or interceptions. And I also feel like Javarius Owens, who was playing from depth a lot at Houston, he's another player who falls into that category. And one final thing on what you just mentioned, Nick, and we can then we can get Bobby out of here, and we're gonna, ha I'm gonna, I know everyone already knows it, but we're gonna have you tell people where where they can follow your work, including not just your talking Giants work because you've expanded the coverage with John Boy, um, and I don't know if everybody knows about that, but it's still some great, excellent film breakdowns during the year and in the off season for the draft. But to your point you just had, Nick, I feel like that's maybe the thing I'm most excited about watching the Giants this year. It's that idea that like we're gonna see them have some games where the matchup between the Giants' defensive front. And whoever the team's offensive line is, especially if that team's running zone, 
they can just allocate all their resources to the pass game and still stop the run. Seven defensive backs on the field, six defensive backs on the field because of that defensive front. And when you can do that, it gives you such an edge, in my opinion, from a defensive standpoint, from schematic standpoint. And that's one reason why I think Nick McLeod might be the starter because to me, I think he's the best run defender. Bobby McCain is a, is a speed bump run defender, right? He, he's going to get in your way. He's going to be annoying, but he's not like a really true impactful type of guy. Dane Belton just needs to work on his angles a little bit more, but Nick McLeod, he's a pretty sure tackler. If all things go well for him, he could slide into the Julian Love role and at least play up to maybe like 80 to 85% of that.